a lot of what we've seen from Trump is that it's important to him to be a leader and stand up for the American people, but the specifics of the deals in the end haven't been that important to him. Uh, I would cite the, the NAFTA agreement where he talked uh, at length during the election about how he wanted to completely redo NAFTA, and then he, he highlighted that it was drastically changed, but most analysts would kind of conclude that a lot of the changes were fairly cosmetic. And then likewise with the North Korea summit, uh, for the most part, uh, it uh, really didn't change the dynamic that much, other than obviously we weren't having uh, more missile tests, but there really isn't a lot of evidence that North Korea denuclearized, uh, like Trump promised. So in a lot of these scenarios, I think Trump needs to be seen standing up for the American people. but. If he really wants a deal, I think accepting anything that might end up being even slightly cosmetic is, is usually okay by him. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the North Korean summit, which I guess is another event risk, isn't it, for the market at the end of this month? Um, and look, you know, the first summer was a get to know you, lots of lovey dovey, you know, handshakes and cuddles and all this kind of thing. And we could sort of maybe excuse them for not achieving a huge amount because, well, it was a starting point, right? The conversation right. was started. Second time round, the market's not going to be so forgiving. Yeah, and I think that's right. I would, I would say that there's probably uh, more downside risks as we enter this uh, compared to last time. Last time, I think there was a lot of relief that at least there was uh, some relationship that avoided uh, escalation of conflicts. Uh, this time around, I think the concern is markets are fairly comfortable with the status quo, and yet uh, nothing really has been done about denuclearization, and that I think uh, Trump is a little bit sensitive to the fact that actually nothing really that material was accomplished in the last last round, and therefore I think he's probably going to feel a greater need to accomplish more this time. And therefore, that sort of uh, has, has the risk of that the, the conflicts could escalate um, in, in this round compared to what the market's expecting right now. Yeah. And, and, and do you think there would be a material market impact? Well, markets have always had a tough time trying to assess what the, the North Korea risk should be, as how, it should, how markets should price it in. Uh, for the fact of the matter is, it's such an extreme event if it really got out of control that obviously it's a, it's a disaster. On the other hand, it's been an ongoing problem for years, and usually markets, when they've reacted to it, have always sort of regretted it. So for the most part, I think markets really struggle with how to price North Korean risks. And I think it's such a just tail event, uh, such an extreme risk that for the most part, I think uh, markets will not react too strongly until they really see evidence that this is really breaking down in a way that we haven't seen before. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.